Attention shoppers, tonight on the checkout, Jules plays the Price is Right Consumer Edition, Craig has an expensive Groundhog Day thanks to financial commissions, and Hannah says F you to Dick Smith. Contestants on the Consumer Price is Right. And now, here's your overly pedantic host, Julian Moore. Hello there. Are you ready to hear what the consumer law says about prices? <laughs> and now let's say hello again to our carryover champ. It's Beverly. Bev worked at the jewellery store Zamels where she used was now price tags on things that had never been sold at the higher price. So Beverly's already won a federal court fine of $250,000. Let's get started, JB. What's our first item up for bids? You'll hit all the right notes with this home stereo system from Akai. But what happens when the gift shop's showing four different price tags? The in-store price tag says $300. But look what's underneath. Then there's the printed catalogue that says $275, but uh-oh, it scans at $325. Ooh. Now, the consumer law says that items must be sold at the lowest displayed price, but you all know that. <laughs> the question for you, Cheryl, is which price is right? Well, the tag underneath does say $250. I'll go with $250. Oh, oh Cheryl. A partially obscured price tag is a displayed price, but that $250 price tag is totally obscured. So, bad luck there. Let's see if you can do better, eh, Ron? Yeah, can I check if the printed catalogue is current or if the offer has a cut-off date or excludes the region I'm in? Excellent pedantry, Ron. Is Ron on the right track, JB? In catalogues, time limits and geographical exclusions are OK if they're reasonable. But in this case, Ron, there aren't any. I'll go with the catalogue price then. $275. Oh, Ron, the catalogue price is lower, but the business published a retraction. And they are allowed to do that, Ron, so bad luck. But I never saw a retraction. Doesn't matter, Ron. Businesses only have to publish a retraction to a similar audience or circulation. The fact that you didn't see it makes no difference. OK, Keith, it's over to you. What price do you think's right? I'll go the $300 on the tag, Julian. Yeah! Well done, Keith. The lowest displayed price is the one that consumers should be charged. But there are exceptions, aren't there, JB? That's right, Julian. For example, unit price info that implies a lower total price doesn't count as a displayed price. This confusing distinction is proudly brought to you by Australian Consumer Law and Consumer Price is Right! Well done, Keith. You are playing our next game, and it is Take the Bait. So let's find out what our bait is tonight. You're going to love this, Keith. It's a new car! Yeah! This sporty Holden Hatch is the ultimate runaround. It normally sells for $15,000, but tonight it could be yours for just $10 thanks to Holden, and consumer price is right! Sounds too good to be true, Julian. Oh, dear, Keith, the lovely Crystal is trying to weasel out of that offer by saying that it's out of stock. Well, Keith, that car could be yours if you can just tell me whether Crystal has to sell it to you for $10. Yeah! Well, they displayed the price, Julian, so I'm going to say they've got to sell me the car for $10. Oh, oh no! no. Keith, the seller can withdraw the item from sale instead of selling it at the lowest displayed price. But she was never going to sell me the car for 10 bucks. That's misleading. That's right, Keith. You can withdraw items from sale, but bait advertising is still illegal. Businesses must have a reasonable supply of products at the advertised price. So, Keith, no car, but... 
Here's a little consolation prize. It's a Kodak PlaySport pocket video camera. Valued at $218 by six Harvey Norman franchises, even though they couldn't actually supply them, leading to an ACCC fine of $6,000 each. So do I get the $6,000? No, you don't, Keith. <laughs> Being misleading or deceptive about prices is illegal, so don't be afraid to ask more questions or even complain to the ACCC if you don't think the price is right! Sun tough. I, Icarus, shall make wings and fly to the sun. Now you be careful, my boy. Relax, Daedalus. I've got sun tough protection. Fly! Important note do not store or install in direct sunlight. Sun! Tough. When the sun gets tough, sun tough stuffed. Do you ever feel like you're experiencing Groundhog Day? Craig? Craig Newcastle? I thought it was you. Hi, thanks for watching. Don't tell me you don't remember me. It's Ned. Ned Bryson? I sold you life insurance five years ago. Oh, Ned Ryerson, Bing, yes. Thanks for the insurance. Sorry I'm not dead. <laughs> Ooh, watch that first step. It's a doozy. But unlike in the movie, which we're in no way copying, you're probably caught in your own Groundhog Day without even realising it. When every year you pay your trailing commissions on your financial products. Hey! It's okay, I'm your superannuation fund. So what? Craig? Craig Newcastle? I thought it was you! Ah, Ned Ryerson, the guy that sold me life insurance six years ago. You remembered! Yeah! Hang on, you're still getting money from me. <laughs> Absolutely! 130% in the first year and 30% every year after that. God. Ooh, what's that first step? It's a doozy. These commissions could be getting paid to... Hi, Craig. ...a mortgage broker. Has it been a year already? A broker for health or general insurance. And that could include online comparison sites. Simples. And even though recent changes to the laws prevent trailing commissions on new funds, you still pay commissions on old managed funds. Hi, Chris. It's Craig, actually. Whatever. Now, you may not even think about your commissions because you don't pay them directly. They're paid for by the bank, the insurer, or the finance company. But they do add to the cost of your product. You can try and avoid some of them. <laughs> if your money's in an industry super fund, you won't pay any commissions. But others are harder Craig? to avoid. Craig? Craig Castle? I thought that was... You can try and avoid brokers by dealing with banks or insurers directly. But often you just get the same prices. And the bank or the insurer pocket the parts set aside for commission themselves, so you're no better off. He's over there. Stupid graphic. But there is another way to get your hands on some of that commission. Each year, banks, brokers and advisors get paid over $3.3 billion in ongoing commissions. Take back your share today. By using a commission rebater. Some advertise, but there are plenty more online. Here's how it works. You sign up to a commission rebater and they become the broker on your products. Craig? Craig Newcastle? I thought it was you. And you are? Ned! Ned Ryerson? I'm your insurance broker. Right, this guy's my insurance broker. 
With a rebater, they still keep part of the commission, but you get some of it back. It's reasonably easy to sign up to, although there can be a bit of annoying admin at the beginning. Because as they say, the first steps are doozy. With some products like managed funds, retail super funds, life insurance, TPD and income protection, you can keep your same policies and just change the name of the brokers. But with others like home loans and home insurance, you have to get a new policy with the rebater. So make sure that the commissions justify the price of those new policies. Uh, you should shop around because commission rebaters also charge different rates. So I take the first $75, then I split the rest 50-50 with you. Can we do small talk first? We just split everything 50-50. Oh, like if we get divorced. We split everything 50-50 for the first $790, but then we'll give you 100% for the rest. We split 55% to us, 45% to you for the first $480, then you get 100% after that. I'm gonna choose between you two guys. You get 100% of commissions. What's in it for you? I just like to help. And you have to agree to receive regular but not onerous emails from our stockbroking service. Oh, I'm not entirely sure I'm ready for emails from a stockbroking service at this stage of our relationship. <gasps> Again. Now you may be wondering if this is unfair to the brokers you're replacing who will no longer be getting their commissions. Craig? Craig Rucastle? Why'd you cut me loose? I spent all that time getting you insurance. But that was eight years ago and you haven't done anything since. If your broker did work hard getting you a good deal, it could be pretty harsh to cut them out of commissions. Only you can make that call. But I sent you Christmas cards! God, I'm finally out of that cheap-ass knockoff of Groundhog Day. It's too early. So dehydrated. Oh my god, me too. I need to drink like a litre of coconut water. After all, coconut water helps keep you hydrated. Actually, coconut water has been called the wonder health drink, but there's little scientific evidence for that. If you want to be smart, swap it for plain water. That's the best fluid for hydrating the body. Wait, where did you get that from? Have you been reading toilet doors again? Uh, no, I've been reading a trusted source of information. Well, I got my information from a trusted friend who I turn to for wise and practical advice in all aspects of my life. Well, what, what did, did you read? read? I'm, I'm reading, reading Good Health, Health Magazine, Magazine, February 2015, page 74. 76. Why would my trusted friend, who I turn to for advice in all aspects of my life, give me such terribly confusing advice? <gasps> Maybe Good Health Magazine also incorrectly diagnosed my pooch as a pessimist. Cheer up! Cheer up! Cheer up! Cheer up! Cheer up! Cheer up! Cheer up, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. Welcome back to Consumer Price is Right. Cheryl Walters, it's your turn to play. Come on over, Cheryl. <laughs> All right, Cheryl, let's play our next game. It's Everyday Price Hikes, thanks to our very good friends at Woolworths and price tags like this one, Cheryl. Have a look at this. It's the extra saver tag for Golden Circle Tomato Juice. How much do you think that costs at Woolies? Two dollars, because that's what it says. Does it? Take a closer look, Cheryl, because the price for anyone who isn't a member of the Everyday Rewards Scheme is actually $2.49. Oh, I don't like that, Cheryl. Uh, Julian, that's illegal. Oh, steady on. You'll get us in all sorts of hot water, won't you, JB? That's right, Cheryl. Woolworths denies those price tags are misleading. Hang on. Where does it say that? There it is. <laughs> now, Cheryl. Have a look at these three real Woolworths products, OK? The prices that you can see are the everyday saver prices. You have to guess how much Woolies charges if you're not a member of their loyalty scheme. And the further off your guess is, the closer our price hiker gets to that ledge. And you do not want that to happen, Cheryl, because if it does, 
You'll miss out on one of these. You'll regret your childless spinster life even more, Cheryl, with this deluxe nursery cot. Spotted on sale at Pottery Barn for $536, it comes with a $152 shipping fee. But because only fixed delivery charges have to be included in the price, that $536 price tag might still be right. Fascinating stuff, JB. But Cheryl, let's have a look at your first price hike product. It's Bertoli Extra Light Spray at the extra saver price of $3.50. How much do you think Woolies charges if you're not part of the loyalty scheme? $3.80, let's find out. Oh, Cheryl, $4.20. You're going to have to go hiking. Oh, dear, Cheryl, but you're still in this. Let's have a look at our second price hike product. Pack on a few extra pounds, Cheryl, with this delicious Sara Lee strawberry cheesecake. Now, Cheryl, you'll notice that that price tag looks a little bit different. That's the new Extra Saver price tag which Woolies introduced because a number of customers asked for them to be made clearer, not because the old ones were misleading. <laughs> OK, now, Cheryl, how much do you think Woolies charges non-members for the cheesecake? $5.50, let's find out. Oh, Cheryl, bad luck, let's see what happens. Oh, Cheryl, bad luck, not your night tonight, but at least you didn't choose the raisin toast because that price doubles from $2.60 to $5.20. Bad luck, Cheryl, off you go. You won't be part of the showcase playoff, but Keith, you will. You're up against Bev. Yes, it's time for the Showcase Playoff, and tonight's Showcase is brought to you by Component Pricing. Yes, watch out, shoppers. Advertising a price that's only part of the cost is illegal, unless you also show the single price prominently. Thanks, JB. And let's see now what's in tonight's Dodgy Pricing Showcase. You'll never forget this concert experience thanks to the extra payment processing and handling fees sneakily tacked on by Ticketmaster until the ACCC intervened. And last but definitely not least, pack your bags for a Bill Shock holiday for you and three high-flying friends. At just $169 each Melbourne to Brisbane, these fares are attracting lots of customers. Plus the ACCC and the Federal Court. Yes, thanks to unfair pricing, all this and more could be yours for God knows what. OK, as carryover champ, you go first, Bev. So how much would those four $169 plane tickets actually end up costing? Well, four times 169 is $676. So $676. Higher. $684. Higher. $712. Higher. $801. Still higher. $892. Higher still. $921. Higher. $1,327. You got it, Bev. <laughs> <laughs> well done, off you go there. Bad luck, Ken. See you later. Well done. Look at that. She's very happy. There's more information on pricing rules at consumerlaw.gov.au. And remember, as we always say, there's no need to be unreasonable or unpleasant to service staff, even if you are a belligerent pedant like Julian. F you, JB. And remember, next time you're out shopping, don't forget to ask yourself if the price is right. <laughs> Thank you very much and good night. Black and Gold, Australian canola oil. Ingredients, canola oil. Australian vegetable oil. Ingredients, Australian canola oil. Huh? For just $3.03. For just $3.41. Why the difference? The active ingredient is... The word vegetable. Why? Black, Black and gold. gold. Value, value you, you can, can trust. trust. Um, I trust that value more. 
Hello and welcome to F YouTube, where we listen to your consumer gripes so your dinner party guests don't have to. Then, after keeping me on hold for three days... Uh, darling, do tell him about the warranty. Oh, yes! Oh, wow! Is that the time? Here's something new for F YouTube. Someone's being a dick. Because as Marit pointed out, if you buy something on the Dick Smith website... During the checkout process, when I was prompted to check the box for their privacy policy, it also signed me up for their newsletter because it was the same checkbox. I'm not sure privacy and a mandatory newsletter go together. <laughs> Can I have some privacy, please? Sure. On closer inspection, it seems that you can complete the purchase without filling in the checkbox. But that's not made clear to users because it looks like the checkboxes that are compulsory almost everywhere else. Even one of our researchers on the show, Mark, whose job it is to look out for this stuff, fell for these sneaky dicks. And as punishment, he's been doing humiliating cameos ever since. Isn't that right, Mark? There's no baby in the script, is there? Thanks, Mark. Australia's Spam Act is clear. You have to consent before you're sent any marketing material. But if you think clicking that box is your only option, and you're agreeing to two things at once, is this really consent? Marit put that view to Dick Smith, who said... Your feedback has been valuable to us. But not valuable enough to add one more checkbox to their website. Which is fair enough, the World Wide Web is famously lacking in space. So, we tried to get through to Dick Smith in a way they'd understand. We disagree that we have broken any laws and agree to being portrayed as creeps on the checkout. They haven't replied, which is a shame because we'd really value their feedback. Next up, some juicy goss from Joanne. Apparently, Gold Circle uses beef products in the manufacture of fruit juice. We looked into this and surprisingly it's true. For example, Golden Circle has previously acknowledged through a spokesperson... Really? Go on. Beef-derived gelatin is used to remove cloudiness in our apple juice. As Joanne pointed out in an email, this information not only affects Hindus, but also vegans and vegetarians. And others. I'd only drink gelatin that's derived from naturally marbled four-week bone egg juice grown locally, organically and fed on organic... And what's the perfect complement to this beef-derived gelatin? Very small amounts of alcohol. Oh, c'est bon. To keep flavours stable, clean and crisp. Brings a whole new meaning to getting on the juice. Although Golden Circle did point out... They were used only for production purposes and were not present in the final product. Wouldn't be the first time alcohol has played a role in the production process. Hey, you look like a pretty woman. Like, like Julia Roberts. <laughs> the thing is, products must label ingredients and potential traces of things that could physically harm people. Allergens like peanuts, crustaceans, hepatitis A. But they aren't required to label processing aids used in the course of manufacturing, which can include things like gelatin or alcohol. So if that kind of thing bothers you, it won't be on the packet, and the store you buy it from probably won't even know. You'll need to ask the manufacturer, has this thing I don't like been used as a processing aid for this product? That's if you really want to know. Finally tonight, an FU from the delightfully named Anne Rainbow, who got an email to celebrate two year anniversary of being with Live Connected. But there was no pot of gold. They told her, A freeze is coming. And in this story, Mr. Freeze is more like Mr. Feeze. The email that Anne promised, I was allowed to keep my $11.99 a month plan. But there was just one catch. You have to pay a freeze fee of $9.90 per month. What? So this freeze. fee guarantees Anne won't have to pay more as long as she pays nearly twice as much? That's like saying you're dropping your prices by $15 a month, but with a $20 price drop fee. That's good. Mike also got good news from Live Connected, which said he could either pay the monthly freeze fee or change your plan at any time without charge. And when Mike looked at the website, he saw that he could change his current $19 plan for free to one with the same allowances for $23, which is $5.90 less than it would have been had he paid the freeze fee. I'm going to need someone to explain this to me. So if Mike does nothing, he'll be automatically charged his original plan plus the new freeze fee. Oh, oh! Paying $28.90 for a plan that's essentially worth $23. Oh. Teacher's pet. 
So, was this really good news? They did their best to suggest that in their email. Comparing some of our older plans with what's available today, it would certainly be fantastic value, even when you include the freeze fee. But given that it wasn't fantastic value for Mike, was this misleading? We asked Live Connected and they said, I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. Nah, just kidding. They argued that since they'd said some of their plans represented great value, it wasn't misleading. Yes, and some might say they were misleading customers with tricky language. Some might say that the use of some in that sentence is carefully designed to ensure some customers don't realize they're not some people. And that's why we also reckon that some people who got that email and unlike Mike stuck to the current plan because they thought it was better value have every right to get a sum back from Live Connected. No, the other one. And that was only one of the tip-offs we've received about outrageous fees and charges. So if you have any doozies, send them into this email address and we'll read them for the small fee of $9.90 per word. Because as the famous saying goes... In this universe, there's only one absolute... Fees. Finally, to take us out tonight, performing the checkout theme music, it's Mark! Yeah, that.